going to be creating a red bouncing ball. So this is all going to be done with code within the HTML. All we have is a main container element called with a class of main and then also an h1 tag that we're going to be using to toggle the movement of the ball to start it and to stop it. So setting up all of the styling properties, creating a ball element and setting up all of that elements styling properties, also creating a main ball container that's going to contain the arguments and the values that we need for the animation and then adding an event listener that when the h1 is clicked it will either stop or start the animation so you either request animation frame or cancel the animation frame the movement is done with a function called mover where we're checking to see whether the ball is moving outside of the x-axis so either larger than the area or less than zero and then also within the y-axis so larger than 400 or less than zero and that will toggle the direction of where the ball is bouncing and here we're updating and setting the ball movement incrementing it with the speed value updating the position with the styling position and checking to see if the ball is still in movement and if it is then we run another request animation to continue the animation frame Let's go ahead and select the page element. So we've just got the one page element with the class of main. I've already selected it using the query selector and we'll update some of the style properties of the main element. And within the main, this is where we're gonna have the bouncing ball. So that ball is gonna be bouncing around. We're gonna create the ball as well using JavaScript. So update the style and set the, set the width of that element to be 600 picks. And we'll also set the height of the element to be 400 picks and style and set the background color. So that gives us the main page element where we're going to have the bouncing ball contained within. We want to create the ball element. So using the documents, create element. The element that we're creating is going to be a div and let's apply some style properties to the element so set the background color and set the background color to be red so for the ball style we'll do the border radius to be 50 percent so that way it's round add the ball to the page we need to set a width and a height for the ball so set it to be 40 picks so that gives the, us the ball on the screen. It's on the top left hand side. Set the ball style position to be relative. So make it relative to the parent. We'll also create a ball object and I'll just call it B. So that will have an X position and a Y position. And we could also include the width and height in here as well. And then as we're setting it, we can make updates and changes to it if the need is there. So where we're setting the width and height, set that using the ball width. This one can be the ball height two picks. So see what that looks like. Uh, and now we need to set the ball style left and top position. So the left position is going to be the ball X picks and the top position is going to be coming from the ball Y picks. So that moves it over to 50 and we can update the Y position. So that will be 50 and 30 where we're positioning the ball. We want to create the animation for the ball. So we're going to start and stop the animation with the click of my name here. So select the page element, the H1, and using the document query selector, select the element with the H1 tag. And for that element, then we can start and stop the animation frame. So let's add an event listener to the H1. So add an event listener. The event that we're listening for is going to be a click. So it's going to start the movement. I'll create a global object and I'll just call that Annie. 
And actually we can keep that within the ball to make it a little bit cleaner. So this will be just a blank object. And then this is where we can add the animation frame into. So within the B any object, we can set the request animation frame. And the animation frame is just going to be calling to a function called mover and create that function. So this is where the movement is going to occur. We're going to be moving and updating the ball position. So that's being called within there. And we'll set the move to false. And that way we have something that we can toggle. So checking to see if the B move. So if this is false, then we're going to run the request animation frame. And we'll set the B move to be true. And otherwise, we want to cancel the animation frame and the B any animation, and we're not going to request it again. And we're going to set the B move to be false. Within the mover, we'll have a condition that will check the B move. And if B move is true, then it'll run the request animation frame. So that will allow us to continue the animation. So now we've got the animation frames running within the mover so we can toggle it on and off but we need to get the ball moving so let's set and update the current position of the ball and we're going to need to set the ball left and top position so add those in and then here we need to calculate the position so i'm also going to be adding in to the object a direction so we've got the direction x so we'll set that to be one and the direction y we'll set that to be one as well so this is going to be the speed or the direction that it's moving in and you can update these afterwards and what we're going to do with those is we're going to turn them to negative once it's moving out of the boundaries so for now within the mover we'll make an update to the B X position and add to it the B direction X value. And we'll do the same for the Y. So once we click it, that stops and starts the animation and it's moving fairly slowly. So what we can do is we can update this uh, to be a faster speed if we want, and we can adjust these as needed. So that will move the ball a little bit faster. So right now it looks like it's just about to run off of the screen. So we need to capture it to make it to have the bouncing effect. So this is, we can do this with a condition. We're checking to see if the B Y position is going to be greater than, and we know the width is 400 minus the height of the B height. And so if this is the case, then we're going to update the by and multiply it by negative one. And we'll do the movement just before we update the ball speed. It should change direction once it hits the bottom. Apply this as well to the y act to the x-axis to see if bx is greater than 600 minus b width. And we're taking account the B width, so that's the ball width. And if it is, then we're going to change the direction by multiplying it by negative 1. So now we should have a bounce at the bottom. We should have a bounce on the right-hand side. And we need to have a bounce at the top. So we can also check to see if the position of BX is less than 0. Then we're also going to change direction. And we can see if by is less than zero, and we're also going to change direction there as well. So see what happens where we've got the ball bouncing now off of the edges, and it will continue to move and bounce. You can also introduce a speed to this. So if we want to have a speed value that can change, we can introduce speed, and I'll set the speed to five 
You can add additional variables as needed. So what we'll do here is we'll take it and then also multiply it by the B speed. So that way that will incorporate the speed into it. So you can make it faster or slower depending on whatever the B speed variable value is. So that's how you can create a bouncing ball all using JavaScript and all of the styling as well we're applying with JavaScript. And of course, uh, to simplify it, you could do that within the HTML, within the style sheet. So go ahead and create your own version of the bouncing ball using JavaScript and DOM page elements.